Hey kids, Chris Cooper here again with one of these just shameful attempts at an instructional lesson type thing. Last time we talked about the old 212, and that's just a way to navigate the fretboard by using a specific kind of shape that involves two notes on one string, one note on the next string, and two notes on the next string. This is a very comfortable, almost, dare I say, natural shape for your fingers on the fretboard. Just kind of feels good to play it. Almost no matter where you put it. Yeah, it's kind of nice. So we're going to expand that because with the 212 lesson, I showed you the shape and then I played a bunch of stuff, but I kept saying you can get cool licks out of it. I didn't really say how. So we're going to take the B minor pentatonic scale. I'm assuming that you know the scale and you know it in a couple positions. Uh, here is the home base position all of us guitar players love. Sounds good. There's almost no wrong notes depending on context. That's why we like this scale. Everything's pretty safe. I'm going to add, for the sheer hell of it, the ninth into the scale because it sounds cool. Uh, cool is a relative term, but I would say that Stevie Ray Vaughan's use of the ninth or Grant Green or Steve Vai or... Let's just say lots of people like the nine. Why is it called a nine? Well, it's the second note of the scale, in this case, from B, C sharp, up an octave, maybe up an octave again. Uh, if you want to hear how it sounds like, here's a simple way. Here's B minor seven. Here's B minor seven with a nine on top. I hate using the term jazzy, but for a lot of us rock guys, that sounds kind of jazzy. We're including that note within some of the patterns we're using. So just to get to it, within the pentatonic scale and the positions below and above, if you're looking at it the right way, you can see opportunities to, to use the 212 to get basically arpeggios out of the pentatonic scale, or pentarpeggiosity, if you will. Looking at the top of the scale, maybe starting on E, all right, well, we got two notes. We got one note, A. We got two notes. That falls right within our pentatonic if you're okay with including the nine, which I am, and I guess you should be too. We could look at it again, maybe starting from A. Well, here's our nice, comfortable pentatonic guy. There's another note in the pentatonic. Here's that nine again. Here's flat seven. Two, one, two. So now we just found two. 2-1-2 patterns using the G, B, and E strings and the D, G, and B strings. We can probably do it again, starting here. Kind of a D major 9 sound. Again, 2, 1, 2. And most of these notes are just in the pentatonic. Let's do it again, maybe from B. There's that 9 again. You could replace that, if that's a stretch, with a B. I think it's worth it to get that nine in because it sounds nice. Here's what we wind up with with each of those shapes combined. Technically this is an F sharp minor seven. This is kind of like a D6 thing. D major nine. B minor nine. sounds kind of cool. You can do lots of stuff with this. You can sweep it. You can hybrid pick it. Um, since it's a five note group, it kind of lends itself to doing some cool rhythmic things um, if you're so inclined. So let's hear it over a B minor groove. Got a little bit of overdrive happening. Pick 
Pint arpeggiosity, folks. It's hard to say and even harder to play, apparently. Thank you. <laughs>